everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh and today I wanted to pop on here make a real quick video because I have a real treat here in my driveway. As you can probably tell, we are not sitting in my 2023 NX Hybrid. We are actually sitting in a 2022 RX 350. This is a loaner vehicle from my wonderful home dealer, Lexus of Lakeway here in Austin, Texas. And I have this vehicle because my NX hybrid is in the service department for them to do its six month service, as well as take a look at some of the issues I mentioned in my six month update which were the modem issues I seem to be having, as well as some of the squeaks and rattles that have become apparent in the cabin. So while it's there, I have this car for the weekend. I've had this car now for about four or five days at this point, have been driving it around, absolutely love this RX uh, 350. And as you know, if you watched one of my more recent videos, we have a reservation in on a Lexus TX 550, which is the upcoming mid or full size three row Lexus crossover. And the 550 H plus, which is the plug-in hybrid version, will have exactly this engine under the hood paired with a plug-in hybrid drivetrain. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos to this point, you'll know exactly how I feel about Lexus downgrading the RX to an all four cylinder engine lineup. I think it was absolutely not the right decision because to me, this car, this engine, the beautiful V6 that we have here in this 2022 RX, this is what makes an RX an RX. And so I thought today, since we have this car, and I've been driving this now for about a week or so, um, I would take you out on the road, tell you everything I love about this uh, last generation RX, and we would just kind of step back in time and take a journey back to the glory days of Toyota and Lexus from when this car came from, because there are things about this RX that just will never, Lexus will never be able to replicate them again because we've moved away from some of the things that make this car so magical. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get buckled in and yeah, I'll just tell you everything I like about this car and why I'm, again, I'm so excited for our TX and as well at the end, there are a few things that I much prefer in my NX over this RX. So we'll get to all of that, but get buckled in. Let's hit the road. All right, guys, here we go. We are leaving my neighborhood and I'm gonna take us on the same course that I've taken in all of my different videos where I've taken you out on the road. So if you watched my six month in NX video or my NX versus RAV4 video, we're gonna take the same course um, toward the expressway. We'll get on there. Hopefully I'll be able to open the RX up full throttle on the on-ramp so you'll be able to hear the engine there. And we'll just kind of wander around town and probably finish up at the same park that I've taken you to before as well. And, you know, I have to say that the very first thing that I was struck by when I got into this car at the dealer and continue to be struck by every single time I get in this car to drive it somewhere is how refined this RX is. And a lot of that comes from this 2GR engine and the kind of overall package that it creates whenever it's put into a, into a Lexus like this. Because there's just no getting away from the absolutely beautiful and refined feeling that that this 2GR V6 brings to any vehicle it's put in. And it doesn't just have to be a Lexus. This engine is used in the Camry. It used to be used in the Highlander. It was in the Tacoma as well for a short bit. And whenever you put this engine in a car, the engine itself is so overpowered and understressed that it creates just the most smooth and linear and just amazing drivetrain you could ever want or imagine in a car. And this is the problem that I've I've complained about many, many times with, again, this uh, or the new RX and the uh, other Lexus and Toyotas going from this 2GR V6 down to a Turbo 4 or a Turbo Hybrid 4 or just a standard Hybrid 4 is you can never replicate the refinement that comes from this engine and the way that Toyota used to build their cars. We have been now, you know, cruising on along as, as you've been with me here in the car and I've been, you know, accelerating. I'm actually on the gas pedal right now. 
and you barely hear the engine at all. If I were in my NX, as you've been with me, if you've been with me in the NX as we've driven around, you always hear, whenever you put your foot down in the accelerator, even if it's just very lightly, you hear that four cylinder spooling up. And the reason for that is, you know, a four cylinder just isn't as big, it's not as powerful, and it's not as capable as this V6 is. And so it has to work a lot harder whenever you're asking for power to deliver it. Okay, so here we are, we are approaching the on-ramp to the expressway, it is at that next intersection there, and hopefully again I'll be able to open this up full throttle as we turn out there, and you'll be able to hear, again, you will hear engine noise, but it's so much nicer, so much more pleasant than what you get in the NX with the two, two and a half liter uh, four cylinder. So. I'm gonna give this BMW up there some leeway and no one's behind me so I can get enough runway in front of me and okay here we go so this is full throttle in the 2GR and there we go throttle. probably heard a lot quieter in here at this engine than what's in the RX hybrid that or the NX hybrid that I own and what's in the new RX hybrid because the NX and the RX hybrids now share exactly the same drivetrain and out here on the concrete road as well there's so much less road noise than what comes into the NX that I own and I'm hoping that the same is true of the new TX as well when we get that now out here on this concrete road, we are getting a little bit of that kind of echo and vibration coming through because we are on what's basically a concrete viaduct. So there's some of that that you can't avoid, but what you're hearing, and I'm gonna shut up in a minute to let you hear it, is out here in the NX, you hear that four cylinder roaring away to try to get the car and keep the car up around 80 miles an hour. I'm gonna give it a little bit of gas. You can hear that at highway speeds too. So here we go. Here in this RX though, my foot is on the accelerator pedal right now, okay? So I'm not coasting, I am keeping this car up at speed on the accelerator and you don't hear it at all, one bit. It's so unintrusive, so refined, because this engine is, again, just like effortlessly powerful, effortlessly smooth, so linear, that there's really not even that much noise to refine or dampen out of this car. Um, I'm gonna pull past this Equinox here, get in the left lane, and open it again full throttle so you'll be able to hear that on a concrete uh, viaduct. So let me do that now. I just love this engine so, so much. This experience that we're having right now, where we don't hear the engine, it's so soft, it's so smooth, so refined, so comfortable as well. This is what makes an RX an RX. I don't think that, I've driven the new RX, both the turbo and the uh, standard 350 hybrid. And because it's a four cylinder, and there's just, again, no way to dampen out that four cylinder. It just takes away from the experience of what I think an RX is supposed to be or really should be. Like, this is what I want from an RX. I want serene, I want comfortable, I want to this experience is what I want from an RX. The other thing as well that I have just fallen in love with as I've driven this car over the last four to five days is the interior of this car as well feels 
it feels so old school Toyota. And any of you who out there who have one of these, have an older RX in this, have a Forerunner, have an older Highlander, have an older Camry, you'll know what I mean when I say that there's a difference between new school Toyota, so you know current cars that they make today, and old school Toyota like what we have in here. There's just such a big difference, in my opinion, in the way everything feels. I love the beige interior that we have in here. This is, I believe, called Macadamia. That's what they were calling this kind of cream color for a while was macadamia. Um, I love the headliner in here. It's so soft. It's almost like a beautiful uh, kind of, it's not like wool necessarily, but kind of a, like a beautiful, the word is escaping me at this point, but it's kind of a beautiful, I'll put it in the video because I'll remember it later. But the headliner, so soft, so thick, rich, supple, beautiful. It doesn't feel like that in the NX, it doesn't feel like that in the new RX. Again, very similar to what I have in my 4Runner. The way that all the interior quality material, the plastics feel in this car as well. They're so thick, they feel so substantial. Everything you touch in this car feels a grade above what you get in any new Lexus. And I'm counting the new RX, the new ES, the new uh, NX. It's just different. And one of my other favorite things about this car is this steering wheel here because Lexus no longer does this. So what we have in here is a full, basically wood upper on the steering wheel instead of the strip of wood that we get on the newer Lexus steering wheels at about anywhere between like four to five and then seven to eight on the bottom of the wheel. Again, it's the same thing. It's a solid piece of wood up here. There's just nothing like old school Lexus where we have this beautiful kind of solid piece of wood on the steering wheel. Um, again, I had an RX 350 at the beginning of this generation many, many years ago. That was one of my favorite things about that car was the wooden steering wheel. It was actually the same matte bamboo that we have in here. And you know, the funny thing about this car too is when we're at a standstill as we are right now, it's almost as quiet as my NX Hybrid. Like, that's how quiet it gets. And keep in mind, the NX Hybrid that I own, my NX 350H, when we're at a stop like this, the engine is off. So of course it's not making any noise. But the fact that this V6 is still running at about a uh, 1000 RPM or a little under that at a stop, and it's that quiet. I mean, this is old school Lexus in the best way possible. They just don't build cars like this anymore because everything's got a turbo four and everything's an F Sport and everything is, you know, supposed to be all sporty and, you know, all the other stuff they're doing. Okay, so we're about to turn into the park now and I wanna wrap up this video with what's not to like about this RX because there's a lot to love, as you've heard throughout this video, but there are a few things about my NX that I have greatly missed. I have to say, having had this car now for four to five days and have been driving it around, there are things that I really, really miss about my NX. And the biggest thing is my infotainment system, the new 14 inch infotainment system that I have in my NX and as is in the new RX as well. Because this infotainment system here in the RX is, it's just not great. And the funny thing about me saying that and feeling this way is it's exactly the same operating system so the underlying software is the same as what's in my 2020 forerunner and i love my forerunner's infotainment system i actually like that infotainment system better than what's in the new lexus the problem with it here is that as you may know if you've watched any videos about this rx or have seen pictures this was never this kind of whole screen setup was never meant to be a touch screen and even when they brought it forward it's still too far away for me to reach with my finger, which means that while you're driving, because I don't want to be kind of, you know, doing this while I'm trying to drive a car, you really do end up falling back to the touchpad or the trackpad quite a bit down here in the center console. And the problem with doing that while you're trying to drive is this trackpad system is a complete mess of overshooting, undershooting, having to look over there to see where the cursor is so you can orient yourself to that before then trying to do anything else with the system. It's just not great. I appreciate that we have a touch screen so that when I'm stopped at an intersection or parked, I can, for example, enter a destination using the touch screen. 
But other than that, it's not great. The one thing I do prefer about it over the NX infotainment that I have is that in this car, we do have hard drive based nav, so we're not relying on an internet connection to get navigation like we are in the newer Lexus systems. But again, using it because while I'm in motion, I have to be using the stupid trackpad touchscreen thing, um, trackpad thing is just a hot mess and I do not care for it. I was actually thinking about whether or not I should go trade in my NX hybrid for an older RX 450H hybrid and I honestly would do it if not for this infotainment system because this is it's just a mess. I also don't find the heated seats and the cooled seats to be nearly as effective in here as they are in my NX. And again, I'm in Texas where it's about 100 degrees outside right now. I think my other camera actually died of heat exhaustion um, just now. And I will say that the seats in my NX, the cold seats in my new NX, get a lot cooler, a lot faster, and are a lot more enjoyable in the summertime than the cold seats here in this RX. I'm not feeling it through the back of the seat as much as I do in my car. But other than that, there's really not that much to dislike about this older RX. I am such a huge fan of this car. I'm such a huge fan of the powertrain. And I, again, just cannot wait for that new TX to come out because if it even gets within 90% of how quiet and refined this RX is, I think we'll have an absolute winner on our hands and I, I will keep that car for as long as it will run. Well, here we are at the park and as you can see, it's not the most beautiful day outside, but that's okay because any cloud cover up in the sky keeps it a little bit cooler outside than it otherwise would be here in Texas during the summer. Um, thank you guys so, so much for watching another video. I know this one may not have been as uh, useful or helpful or informative as some of my others have been, but um, because so many of you have said to me, that you agree that the new RX just cannot match and is not the same vehicle as the older RX was. And so many of us have talked about 2GR V6, like what's in here and just old school Lexus luxury and all that kind of thing. I had to bring you along with me in this car to show you this car, talk all about it, because I know so many of you love this RX the same way that I do. And I think a lot of us are really you know, we're, we're missing this RX in the current lineup. And again, I really hope, and I know a lot of you out there are as well, hoping that the new TX 550H Plus will bring us this kind of experience in a much newer Lexus product. So thank you again for watching. Go check out some of my more recent videos here. Check out my six month in uh, review video on our NX Hybrid. We love that car as much as I do shit on it a little bit. We do love that car so, so much. Um, check out why we're buying the new TX or have a reservation on the new TX 550H plug-in hybrid. Um, and then go check out my most recent video, which is um, why I think Lexus pulled the plug on the RX, the new RX plug-in hybrid. Um, that's a real interesting one that I still have not heard anything more about, but is definitely something that I will be keeping my eye on. So again, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the watches, all the support, all the likes, all the comments. Um, any questions and comments, leave them downstairs. I will talk to you guys next time. Have a great one and take care.